In the first part of tutorial 180, we looked at a very simple program. The problem being that if the end time, date time was actually off the chart to the right, then even though the rectangle was present, it was not visible. So what I've done in this uh, new program, this modified program is created some changes such that the rectangle extends to the right of the chart and keeps on being updated until it reaches its final size as new bars are added to the chart. It also draws a trend line between two points and it also includes a text label. So just to explain that a little bit better, what we've got at the moment is a box between 600 and 705. Now, what we're gonna do is change the time to be a time that is not on the chart yet. So we're going to go for say 720 and let's just round that up. So 720 and we'll change the color perhaps so we can see the differences. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. And now what you'll see is even though the time is not on the chart, the last available time here is 715. So even though the new number, the, the new time that we put in is not on the chart, then we still see the rectangle. Notice that we're not plotting, we're not drawing the line. And I decided not to include that because the problem being, if we draw a line, say from this corner to the top right, that gives a false impression of ultimately what that line is gonna look like because we don't uh, exactly, we, we could do some mathematics with a bar chart like this to work out the correct slope, but even if we did that, that wouldn't work on situations where it's a non-linear chart. I just see that we just added a new bar and the, the, uh, the rectangle has been extended. And what will happen, it will keep on extending until it gets to the final value. And at that point, which I think we said was 720, it will then finalize the rectangle and draw a line between the start point and the end point. So I'm just going to leave this running and then perhaps um, speed it up when you when you see it. But we'll just wait until that 720 bar and you'll see what happens. So you'll see now that we've reached that bar and uh, the rectangle has been finalized and the program has drawn the line between the two points, which of course don't need to be in a rectangle, but they are in this example. So let's look at the program. And uh, what I've done is I have commented out the program that we were looking at before, which is right here, and I've uncommented this program. So what I've done is created a couple of um, methods one of them is I've called drawing object create, and this is creates the drawing objects. It includes drawing the trend line, drawing the rectangle and adding the labels. Let's uh, look at some of the syntax, which will, will be familiar because of the last video where we did the, the rectangle, but not quite because with the rectangle, we create it in a slightly different way. So let's uh, look at that in a moment. Before we do that, we're gonna look at briefly a, another method, which is the drawing object update. And that is where the extension of the rectangle occurs and where the set endpoint of the line of the trend line occurs. But let's look at the, uh, the once statement start. And some of this will be familiar with you because we just looked at it in the first part of the program. We need to convert the strings of the line start and line end times to date time objects. And we do that using datetime.parse. We're also creating an instance of the date time class called write DT. This is the date time of that right most visible part of the chart. To do that, we, uh, we create the object write called write td. And then we use this syntax, write dt dot el date time x equals, and then we can feed into that the most write display value date time. This is in a Julian format. We need to convert that into the date time object. And this is the syntax for that. Now I've included some information about the start and the end times of the lines. And to do that, I've used composite formatting, which is actually very useful. I've not used it much in the past, but what it means is that you can define the values that you're going to be printing at the end of the statement. This is referenced by putting zero in, curl in uh, 
brackets, this one one, this one two, this one three. And you'll see the way that we use that. We just start a, a, a quotes. We can put in any text we want to. Then we put in our uh, zero. Now you can do a few extra things with the formatting. You don't need that comma, you don't need the 20, uh, but you can put in some formatting information here. So the program knows how to format it. And then price two, because that refers to two, that would be this item here, which is actually the third because it's zero based and so on. So anyway, hopefully that might be useful to you. And uh, the way to find out more details about this composite formatting is just go into the dictionary and do a search on composite formatting or on uh, string.format. Anyway, having converted the times into date time objects, we convert them into date time uh, points. Again, we did this in the first uh, first video. So that is just uh, dt point dot create. Then we have the uh, date time object and the price. And then we call the drawing object create, which is the method that we just briefly glanced at a second ago. Let's go back to that. And you can see the syntax between the, the three drawing objects, not two uh, three drawing objects is not too dissimilar. What we do, we set the start end points, but notice in this case, what we're doing now is we're saying create a new trend line and then set start point, set end point. In the first video, we actually used uh, create. So we had rectangle dot create, then we had the DT point one, DT point two. So we do that for the trend line for the rectangle again using the set start point set end point but notice here we're doing something a little bit different and we're saying if the right date time that is an object which is storing the rightmost part of the chart if that is less than the line end date time in other words the whole object is not currently able to be shown on the chart because some of it is on the right of the chart then what we do is we set the end point to be dt point temp which is the DT point of the right of the chart, effectively using the same uh, the same the same value of price, and then in each case we add them to the chart. So we add the uh, the drawing the uh, trend line here, and we add the rectangle here. Similarly for the label, and uh, we add that new text one. We call it text one, new text label, and then we're converting the DT point one to string. And we're uh, setting the uh, the point values dt.1 start and a few other little bits of information which are relevant to the text object. So that is the basics of how we create the things in the first part of the program. But we have to do a little bit more. We have the update and uh, that occurs again similar to the first uh, method that if the date, um, the, the right date time object is less than the line end date time, we set the, the end point to be the DT point temp, which is in other words, the date time of the, the right of the, uh, the chart. Otherwise we set it to be uh, DT point two, which is the actual end of the rectangle. And we have to do a little bit of, add a little bit of code to make sure that that fires correctly. And what I've done is I've said if bar date time, that is the draw, the uh, date time object of the current bar. And what I've said, if that value is greater or equal to the line start date time, and if it is less than or equal to the line end, in other words, the bar is in the between the beginning and the end of the rectangle, then what we do and and the right date time last, that is the, the Julian value of that rightmost point on the, on the chart. If that is not equal to the current value of get, get app info AI right date time, then we reset the, uh, the right date time using this syntax here. We change the debt DT point temp to be equal to the uh, the right DT, that is the rightmost part of the chart and the price end. And then we do an update. And then finally, to make this thing all work, we store the get app info of the uh, AI right date time into right DT last. So what that's doing is this is the get app info AI right date time is updated all the time. That's gonna give you 
the most up-to-date value. But what this is doing is effectively it's taking what the value was last tick. So that is why um, when this fires, when it's different, then we know a new bar has been added and we need to do a recalculation. Okay, well, hopefully that made some sense. Uh, and uh, maybe some of these techniques would be useful to you. This actually works on a number of different charts. So for example, if we go in and look at say a three line break and let's uh, change some values here. So let's say between 6.13 and oh, what's this date? So 6.12, 6.13, let's try um, putting in some different values. So six, 12, six, 13, and say 10, 32, zero, two. So two, oh, 32, and we could put in three, nine, one seven two three nine eight zero, like so. I can put in transparency to a hundred, and we'll leave it at green. So there we have a rectangle drawn on this chart, and uh, again we could put in a date that's after the end of the chart, and that will behave very similarly to. The, uh, the way that it behaved just then in the example that we were giving. And similarly, we could use it, for example, on a Kagi type chart. And let's just see, let's make some changes here. So I'm gonna go from the 12th to the 13th. I'm gonna go from 1400 to 06 to 3920. And we can leave that a green, and there you see we get that on this type of chart as well. So anyway, hopefully that might be useful to you. If there's anything that I've uh, not made clear or confused you even more, then please let me know. And uh, please like the video. Please join the Markplex email list and uh, also consider Gold Pass. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.